We would like to welcome all of you honored guests and thank you for being with us today. We are gathered here to join these two companies in holy matrimony in the presence of God and his company and to bear witness to the miracles of the power of stupidity. Stupidity is our reason for being here and maybe a fair amount of desperation too, but that is neither here nor there. We who partake of this occasion bind ourselves as witnesses to the journey of stupidity they are undertaking today. Okay, enough of that gag. One of the most recent meme stocks, Redbox, is preparing to be part of a merger from hell foisted into being by two desperate debt-ridden companies. A two-for-one special of crushed hopes, failed business plans, and outmoded forms of business. And it is merging with chicken soup for the soul? Wait, what? The, the book company? Yes, that company. Apparently it is a streaming platform now. You see, Redbox is going the way of Blockbuster at an accelerated rate. You don't need to look at the company's 10K to know this is happening. However, to see the full extent of damage this company is suffering from, you do. And we're not even going to go through the whole 10K or 10Q from last quarter, just specific parts of it. And, and please stay with me to hear out because we will need to show just how stupid this acquisition is. First, some housekeeping. If you are totally unaware, Redbox is a U.S.-based movie rental service that was started by McDonald's of all companies in 2003. It briefly had Canadian operations that went over as well as Justin Trudeau in 2022 and exited the market soon after. On May 17, 2021, Redbox was acquired and merged into a SPAC to become public, which is always a great sign of a well-run company that has nothing to hide. Props to whoever was on the marketing team for Seaport Global Acquisitions, though, to sell suckers, I mean investors, on a DVD rental company in 2021. And yes, I can already hear you saying, but hey, they have a streaming service. Yes, but it's complete shit. You have to pay to stream each individual content on offer, just like as if you had rolled up to your local Redbox kiosk. Or you can pay $9.99 for 12 free one night rentals each year or $19.99 for 24. Exciting! For the price most streaming services charge for unlimited content access, you get a hard limit on the content that you can watch each year. To no one's surprise, that has not been great for their earnings. In Q1 this year, Redbox lost $40 million as opposed to $27 million for same quarter last year. This obviously isn't good for the company's balance sheet. Total liabilities are greater than total assets, and in fact, the total debt load of the company is almost all of its total assets. If it wasn't for this merger, Redbox would be racing towards Chapter 7 bankruptcy as we speak. The only people that this merger benefits are Redbox shareholders and management. Sure, shareholders only get .087 shares of Chicken Soup for the Soul for each Redbox share, but at least they aren't completely liquidated, which is what would happen in Chapter 7 bankruptcy. And you get to wash your hands of this and walk away. But why would you agree to this if you're chicken soup? The answer is you wouldn't or shouldn't. And you would think that this would benefit those in the meme stock crowd begging and pleading for this merger to stop so that they can complete their short squeeze of the shorts on Redbox shares. But that's not going to happen. And there's several reasons why. The first reason is Chicken Soup announced on July 11th that because the majority of shareholders pre-approved the merger, that it's already done on their end. I suppose that's rather easy to do when the CEO owns 49.8% of the voting power and just needs another officer or board member of the company to come along with them, regardless of what the average shareholder actually wants the company to do. The second reason is that even though Redbox's vote is set to come up this August, it has a 79% institutional ownership inside the company. 16% of ownership is owned by insiders that are members of or have officer positions inside the company and only a measly 0.1% are retail investors. So really the vote coming up in August is more of a formality. 
Redbox's lenders have already voted in favor of this, and management clearly is behind it. So there's nothing really that retail investors or the meme stock crowd can do to stop this merger as much as they want to. So if the merger is happening and it's set to close before the end of October, anyone holding shares at the current price for Redbox is going to wake up to a 90% loss when the merger finally does close. The Titanic is sinking and my suggestion would be to start looking for the lifeboats. Some may say that that's all well and fine. After all, Chicken Soup for the Soul is a solid company, right? Right? This is where we take the Redbox 10Q and apply it to the Chicken Soup 10Q. Opening up to the balance sheet, we find that Chicken Soup actually isn't insolvent. Yeah, good job. The problem is when we add the acquired assets and liabilities to it. Chicken Soup for the Soul's assets go from $271 million to $633 million, but its liabilities go from $197 million to $661 million. So solvent company acquires insolvent company and goes insolvent itself. This isn't as hopeless as it seems though. Chicken Soup could use the licensing agreements it acquired from Redbox to stream that content on its own streaming service, but that cuts both ways. It could have easily struck those agreements on its own without needing to acquire Redbox. Chicken Soup was offering some of its content on Redbox, so it's arguable as to what sort of carryover that they would earn from Redbox being acquired by them. As of current, Chicken Soup for the Soul claims 40 million active users of its streaming service, and Redbox claims 20 million. Now also, Chicken Soup for the Soul was giving content to Redbox to use and put on its service, so there isn't really sure how many will actually make the jump or actually be users that Chicken Soup will get. So put it about 50 million, somewhere in that neighborhood, which puts it in the neighborhood of streaming services like Hulu and YouTube Red. This at face value may seem like great news for Chicken Soup for the Soul, but last quarter they lost $14 million compared to losing only $9 million same quarter last year. At the end of all this, it just smacks of desperation from Chicken Soup to try and garner some sort of relevancy for itself. There's just nothing here for shareholders, and there's no logical reason that the Redbox acquisition will improve Chicken Soup's position. The company was already losing money, and even with the acquisition of these assets will more than likely continue to lose money. Redbox will finish out its dying days basically being a pump and dump operation by retail investors who think that they're going to get a short squeeze in and will end up poorer by the whole endeavor except for a small percentage of those running this scam. And that wraps things up for this video. I hope you check some of the other videos on this channel and subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you again next time.